Over the past few weeks, my partners and I have been investigating the Burmese python invasion in the Florida Everglades. These snakes are not native to the land. They actually originate from East Asia. So how did they get here? Scientists and researchers believe that smugglers brought them over and they have since prospered so much in fact that there are said to be around 300,000 of them slithering around. The Burmese python is huge. It can grow up to 15 feet long and can devour prey its own body length. In the Everglades, you might find these serpents with huge animal-shaped bumps in their bodies. Their diet consists of anything it is willing to munch on. But the bigger the meal, the longer dinner takes. It may take two days to fully digest a rabbit, while it may take an entire month to go down an eight-foot-long crocodile. Mr. Tetzla, why are the Burmese pythons such a big problem to the Everglades? The Burmese pythons are a huge threat to the Everglades because they're what's known as an invasive species. This is a species that's not native to the environment, so the local ecosystem with all the plants and animals are not used to this creature. So the problem is you don't have natural predators, you don't have other natural controls that happen. And so these animals can breed and breed and they can overtake the ecosystem. Why do you think that the Everglades is a great place for the Burmese pythons to actually live in? The Burmese pythons do very well in the Everglades. It's an ecosystem to them that's very friendly. We've got warm weather here uh, where they're used to living in Asia. They're used to a warm and wet environment and we've got plenty of that out in the Everglades. Also, uh, there's an abundance of animals to eat that are not used to a large snake. Uh, natively, they only have to worry about larger venomous species like eastern diamondback rattlesnakes or indigo snakes. They're not used to a large 10 foot long snake out there. So they've got plenty of prey uh, that's not used to worrying about something like them out there. So they can do very well uh, with no natural predators to speak of other than the alligators and a few other large uh, carnivores, but even those animals are not, they've not grown up eating these animals, so to speak. It's not the generational knowledge of this is a, a normal thing to eat. So they've got, uh, they've got the ability to do almost anything they want. The bigger issue is how much they can reproduce. One female can have a clutch of eggs between 60 and 100 eggs. And so when those little ones hatch and they start going out, even if a lot of them don't survive because they get eaten by wading birds or alligators or other predators, uh, there's so many of them that they have a good chance of producing a whole lot of offspring. Do you believe our current efforts on stopping the Burmese pythons are effective? If not, what would you suggest on doing different? The challenge with the Burmese pythons is everything that's being tried right now has not been totally effective, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about this problem. Florida itself is uh, globally unique for a very bad reason, and that's because we've got more non-native reptiles and amphibians in Florida than anywhere else on the planet. That's partly because there's so much of the pet trade that comes in through the United States and through Florida, uh, and anything that gets released will live in our warm environment. And so pythons turn out to be one of those non-native species that has done really well. And because it can do so much damage to the environment by eating all the animals that other animals are used to eating and need to eat, uh, you not only take away all those prey animals, you're also taking away food from the predators. And so it's got catastrophic effects out in the Everglades. The challenge is when you go out looking for these animals, the discovery rate has been estimated at 1%. So when you go out there looking for them, you've got such a slim chance of seeing them to find them, to get them out of the system, you end up spending a whole lot of time with very little benefit uh, as far as return on investment of your time of getting rid of pythons. So, the challenge is finding better methods and hopefully passive methods where it has, doesn't have to be as labor intensive uh, to get rid of these animals. So that's actually one of the efforts that we're cooperatively funding with some other university and local NGOs to find better methods to uh, attract and be able to eradicate this species.